Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in our chapter two talking about the test management and as a part of this chapter, we are continuing with 2.3, risk-based testing and other approaches for test prioritization and effort allocation. As a part of this, we are talking about 2.3.1 risk-based testing and this is the part three of that where we are going to continue and talk about the risk mitigation. As a part of risk mitigation, of course, in the part one, I told you that risk mitigation is all about how you're going to mitigate the risk which you have identified and assessed. And of course, it requires a clear set of effort in terms of the test cases or the effort in terms of the activities which you perform in order to mitigate. Now, this mitigation could be definitely in two parts. One is, of course, to prevent it to happen because obviously we say that prevention is better than cure. So you try to prevent it as much as it can happen. And then still, if it happens, then you do have a plan B to make sure that this is mitigated in order to overcome the challenges because a particular risk should not be given or delivered with the product to the end user or the customer because they may not like your product in that way. So that's the reason we try to either prevent this risk to happen so that we can curb it without any kind of losses because if risk happens, obviously it will claim some kind of impact. So you try to prevent it first of all, if in case you are unable to prevent it or that risk does not even happen, then of course you try to mitigated by executing your test cases. So the risk-based testing starts with quality risk analysis, which is the very first part of it. And this analysis is the foundation of the master test plan and the other test plan. Now, why we are talking about this? Because your layout, your schedule, your roadmap will begin right there that what you will be doing and how you will be doing. As specified in the plan, the tests are designed, implemented and executed in order to cover the risk. The effort associated with developing and executing a test is proportional to the level of risk. Of course, you know about level of risk from the previous tutorial, that this is the combination of the likelihood and impact, and then you determine a score for the risk. Now, this score will determine you that how many test cases would be enough in order to cover this risk. If you have a, a particular module with a higher severity, probably higher impact and higher likelihood. And you may write, you know, 30 test cases for that. But at the same point, if you have another risk, which is just having a low severity and low likelihood, then probably you would write only five test cases for that. So this is what we mean by saying being proportionate with depending on the level of risk, which will determine that how much effort you need to put in order to mitigate that risk. Some safety related standards can also be followed, for example, FAA, DO, 178B, ED and so on, which will be basically prescribed uh, uh, as the test techniques and degree of coverage based on the level of risk. And these are specific to something, you know, which are more of a domain specific like banking, healthcare, or you talk about medical electronics or aerospace industries. So any such, you know, domain specific uh, applications which you're testing and they have some relevant standards which are applicable at that point of time to analyze the risk and mitigate them. So you do have to follow that specifically because you just, just don't go based on the discussion and the analysis, rather you follow strictly the standards. So these are more important thing. And in addition, the level of risk should influence decisions such as the use of review of project work products and the level of independence which you have in your organization, the level of experience of your testers, because of course, how much they are educated in terms of the product, then they will be definitely able to mitigate the risk much faster and easier. So these are a lot of things which you need to take care of being a test manager in the organization, because just not identifying, just not assessing the level of risk, mitigating is the most important thing. If you are unable to mitigate, you will have a lot of surprises for your end users. So during the project, the test team should remain aware of additional information that changes the set of quality risk. Now, we should accept that any kind of changes in the requirement can happen. Now, of course, you did a risk analysis and you identified the risk area. Now, tomorrow the requirement has been updated. Then you should keep an eye on such changes because these changes might be related to the requirement which you have identified a risk associated with. And then if this change is going to further increase the severity of the risk which you identified or probably going to mitigate the risk completely. So 
obviously on the other side it is safe that you it mitigates automatically by the change but generally this does, does, does not happen <laughs> mainly it happens to be like the risk uh, increases and that's where we have to be very careful if you think that the change has further impacted the risk which you have identified and you planned for then write some more test cases and put more effort to mitigate it now periodic adjustments of these quality risk which results in adjustment to the test should occur these adjustments should occur at least at major project milestones. Adjustments include identifying new risk areas, re reassessing the level of existing risk, and evaluating the effectiveness of risk mitigation activity. So that's what we are just we were just talking about. The same thing has been written here as well, which you need to stick to. For example, if a risk identification and assessment sessions occurred based on the requirement specification during the requirement phase. Once the design specification is finalized, a re-evaluation of the risk should occur because sometimes your risk can be mitigated by doing a proper design as well or during the development itself the risk will be visible and probably you would have mitigated that. So you don't really have to put any more efforts. You just have to validate that this risk does not show when you come to testing. So you know, keeping a track of all these kind of activities will definitely be you know uncovering those risk areas at any point of time. So if no matter you know you don't have to wait for testing to happen to uncover the risk it may be uncovered or show up uh, during design or during coding as well so the moment you see that the risk which you identified is visible during architecture phase then try to mitigate it there itself because sooner is the better so these are a few of the things which you need to consider at this point of time. Additionally, even if you talk about the product quality risk can also be mitigated before the test execution begins. So if we're just talking about that, so keep that point in mind that a risk can be mitigated before testing can happen. Well, that's all from this particular episode team. We'll be getting back to you with the fourth level of this in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.